I've already told you that I was born and raised in Jacksonville. I went all through school in Jacksonville. I left when I went to college and all that sort of stuff. But it, most of my life I have lived here in Jacksonville. I love Jacksonville. I saw it in its boom years. And then I've seen it in some years where we haven't experienced growth. And I want to see those growth years again. I want to bring back excitement to the community. I want people to be glad they live here and want to live here. And what uh, is that, when you look at doing that, what's at the top of your priority list? How do you do that? Well, there's two or three things you have to do. You've got to convince citizens that we're not national. We're local. We're, you know, we're not going to change the abortion laws or the gun, national gun laws or things that the, put aside your differences that we can't because we have a lot of similarities that we're not bringing together. I want to unify the city for us to push forward as a group. It won't be me turning the city around. It'll be me and the council members and the citizens that learn to get along and unite and set their differences aside and, and start going forward and, and have a goal. How do you rebound from uh, a time not too long ago where officials in, in the city of Jacksonville, there's a little bit of turmoil, challenges with the police chief, challenges between uh, city officials and the public, transparency. How do you rebound from that and, and why tackle that? That sounds like kind of a job. <laughs> it does. And, you know, it, it's one, I don't know if you're aware that in the city is financially strapped. We don't have any extra cash, no reserves. And, but no different than when I went on to the corn court. We had, we were seven million dollars out of budget overdrawn in the bank. And they said, oh, your budget chair. Oh, thank you. But we couldn't even finance a police car. I left. We had all new police cars, no debt, all new buildings, new air conditioners, new roof, everything. $5 million jail, wrote a check, and $16 million in the bank. You just got to go in and manage it. What do we need to do? What, what needs to be there? What doesn't need to be there? What, uh, who's doing a good job? Who's not doing a good job? I don't know. Today, I'm not there. But, you know, where can I cut something out? Because number one is you got to have public safety. And you go, I'm going back to your police question, but you, you've got to take care of having enough officers to keep the team. Because our Constitution says life's liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Without feeling safe, you, the others don't matter if you don't have public safety. So this is where I'll focus first is making sure we got adequate police force and our police are adequately equipped to do their job and then you work forward from there and, and you do that you bring in new jobs you you know I passed a bill that allows restaurants to get a permit to sell on premise alcohol no bars but restaurants and so hopefully we can attract some restaurants which are new jobs and all this we have an industrial district so can I work with the surrounding cities and their economic developers and bring uh, new industries here so that changes things you, know, you get more residents which but to, to go back to what I plan to do with the problem of lack of communication from elected officials to the public, I'm going to hold some of my budget hearings out in the open. I'm going to meet with my council members and invite the press regularly. I don't want to do anything that the press and the public's not aware of because I value their opinion. Not, most, not necessarily the press, but right. I do yeah. value. <laughs> I, I value my public's opinion, my constituents. I think they have ought to have a voice in what we do, and they should know what we do. And I think that's part of the problem is with the turmoil with the police chief and what was all going on. It, it felt like I can't put anything out in the public. Well, you but you could. You could. Uh, you always communicate with the public and never give the appearance whether you are or aren't doing anything behind closed doors. You never give the appearance you are. Last Does that help? No, that's that perfect. That was okay. Great. Um, and if you want to just move around and get a little B-roll of, of some of his uh, documentation here, and I was just you're gonna hit that after. Or, or, okay, or, and there's okay. some out on the counter out okay, there. Yeah, yeah. There's pins and you know, you know, all my like propaganda. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, give me just a quick rundown of your uh, kind of background. How long you've been um, in the uh, state? Been a state representative. Right. How long you've been uh, working as a CPA? Give right. Me just kind of a rundown. Okay. I opened up my CPA office, uh, moved back t from Fayetteville to here, where I worked for a CPA firm in Fayetteville, and opened my office in November of 1990. 